Hi everyone, this is the gas walkthrough for someday in the future. Again, I am recording ahead of time. And I'm Philip Newman. I'm solving Snowflake Sudoku by Bill Murphy. And if the interface looks unusual, that is because this is set in tempo. Because the grid is different. And it is in the shape of a snowflake. So we have normal Sudoku rules. Sort of. <laughs> um, Instead of rows and columns, we have three different directions that we need to look. So you can consider these rows. So we need to place one to six in each row. And there are six triangles in each row. Then we have this direction. So diagonally in the positive direction, I guess. We need one to six in each of these. And then additionally, we have this direction in the negative diagonal. We also have regions. So the hexagons are regions. So we also need one to six in each of these. Those are the rules. So as long as you can keep track of which cells need a set of one to six, this one really isn't that bad. Um, but let's get started. And the place I'm going to start here is the one and the two here, because we have a pair of digits. We're going to look at this row. I'm calling it a row. I'm going to call all of them rows. Don't know what else to call them? They're not columns or rows, but calling them diagonals seems confusing too. Um, but we have two digits up here. We also have a three here. And that three means these cells can't be three. So the only place for three is here. It also means we can't put one and two in those cells. So these are one and two. So these are four, five, six. These are four, five, six. And this is like roping in uh, regular Sudoku. Whenever I have three digits in this hexagon, I'm going to have the same three digits in the other row of this hexagon. But now we have four, five, and six here, and we can clean that up a little bit. There's a five looking at these cells here, so this is five. And there's a six looking at this, this is four and six. These have to be two and three. These are one, four, and six. This one's not four, but four. Now we need three and five over here, but there's a five looking up here. So this is three, five. These are one, two, and four. That one's not a one. And these, neither of these are four because of this four. This is two, one, four. We're missing a six here. And then one, two, three here. Uh, we have a six there, so that's our six. We still need a six here. That's the only place for it. Uh, we also have one in one of these two cells, but this is not one. All right, let's look somewhere. Uh, this is not three, because it's three. Ah, let's look across here. We have a one here, but we need a one somewhere here. It can't go in these cells. This is the only place for it. That's one and four there. Now we have four and six here somewhere. We also have four and six here. So four and six have to go in these cells. There's a six there. That's probably a confusing way to look at it. Just look at it with the sixes. Six looks at these cells, this cell, and this cell, and this box. So it's a hidden single six um, from three different directions. This is four for the same reason as this four. Now these are two, three, and five. This one's not five. The four here makes this five, so this is not five, and this is. This is four. The three makes this two and three. The two makes this one and two. The two makes this one. And the three over here makes this two and three and two. And that's the solution. So a neat puzzle, confusing to look at. Um, but hopefully you didn't find it too bad. And I was going to say there are 
there might be some interesting patterns here. We do have the one, two, three, but I think that's probably just a coincidence. There are only so many um, triples that you could have here, you know, the odds and the evens across this direction. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Let us know how you did in the comments, and I will see you next time.